All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another training session with Life Power. I'm your host, Andy, and today we're going to be talking about the SNA 5000, the e-car hybrid. Uh, in particular, we're going to be doing the new format of the remote setting. Uh, it is significantly different to the older version. Um, it's more user-friendly. It's easier on the eye. So we're basically just going to go through that, that uh, setting feature, those setting features today. Uh, for you to become more accustomed to it there. When we do launch the uh, the new uh, setting page, there will be a tab in the top right corner of the page, which will still allow you to switch back the old setting page until you become familiar with it. All right, so um, the, let's start with the, with the uh, presentation. So today we're basically going to be talking about the features uh, and as well as the, re the remote setting, which is the new the new page, all right? Okay, so uh, as many of you are well aware, the SNA uh, is designed to be an eco hybrid, um, and the current variation of the machine that we've got available in South Africa is the SNA 5000, which is the older um, model, which does not come with an external CT. In the future, we will be uh, launching the newer one. Um, when the, the current stocks are depleted, we will bring in the newer uh, five kilowatt, as well as the six kilowatt, which we've already launched successfully in South Africa. I think there could possibly be uh, over a hundred machines installed already, and those come with an external CT, which you see in the diagram here. And the critical thing for um, having an external CT means that you can now export loads um, your essential side as well as your non-essential side, or in this case, it's there and there, right? Without exporting the grid. Um, the new SNA 6 will come with a CP on the gen port as well, um, because on these machines, currently we have a external, oh, internal CTs on both the load and uh, the um, on both these two ports here, we will have we have internal CTs. The newer machines come with these two CTs plus the external and as well as the CT, internal CT on the gen port, which allows us to go uh, use the smart load setting, which I'll discuss a little bit later in um, the presentation. Okay, so uh, on the five kilowatt, the rated power is is five kilowatt, five kVA. Here we're working on um, a uh, power factor of one, but obviously we the machines are rated to go uh, 0.8 leading and 0.8 lagging. So um, you know, in 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 the laptop, then we should have a machine that can deliver up to 6.2 kVA. The MPPT has been upgraded recently with a later version of the firmware. Um, it simply means that uh, the older, the original version of the MPPT with the original firmware, you had your uh, voltage range in open circuit up to 480 volts at 13 amps. With the new version of the MPPT, we can now update that. The voltage stays the same but the, uh, the max current, IMAX, will go up to 17 amps, which then gives you a rated MPPT uh, power of four kilowatts per string. And that is two times four with the kilowatts combined over the two trackers. Right, so we can also up parallel up to 16 machines uh, in single phase, as well as we can do unbalanced paralleling in three phase. Um, and um, uh, many of you have already um, achieved this function. All right, so the remote setting, um, we've obviously now divided the, the remote setting up into eight sections, um, and we will be going through those uh, in detail um, during this presentation. Um, and particularly new for us now will be um, the uh, smart load function, which, which will be added to, uh, to this as well. Okay, so um, the data of the device will be sort of displayed as it is here. 
And this is quite handy to have. Remember that, um, let's see if we can switch to, um, let's see if we can switch to a live screen here. Okay, so this particular one, this is the old version. Remember, this is the old version of the monitoring. Um, I just want to move this out the way. So remember, it, it's always important that you read this, right? So that you can um, you can get all the data field filled out. But I'm going to show you what the new um, what the new page looks like. I just have to unlock a particular setting for this demonstration. Just give me a second. This is Murphy's law. When you do it during the practice beforehand, it works. And then afterwards, uh, you get a snag like this. But we shall prevail. There we go. All right, so this is what the new page will look like. Uh, and typically, you're going to do exactly the same thing. This station here is, uh, I'm using a distributor account. There might be some additional settings there, which um, you don't see on your installer account, but don't worry about that. We will just stick with what uh, you guys are available to, or, or what you can see. All right, so the first thing, obviously, most important is you click the read button and you wait. I, Typically, like to use, leave my mouse hovering over uh, the read button so that we, when it changes from the uh, no entry sign to a hand, uh, then it means that uh, everything is done. So there, you can see it's now changed back to the the cursor's changed back to a uh, pointing for hand. But this particular time here is the time that the machine extracts from the dongle, um, and that is this time is set uh, when you do the station setting. So if, even if you change the time here and set it, it will still, in the old version, it will still uh, revert back to the um, setting that you have done in the station uh, because the, the dongle, when the station was set up, we would remember that you set up the um, the country and the continent and the GMT time. So it uses that, we can put it in here. All right, the Modbus address, please don't change this. A Modbus protocol is what we use when we communicate between uh, multiple inverters in parallel, and we're using protocol one um, for that. So please don't change that because it will it will um, change um, how the machines communicate with each other. Modbus is basically just a, a push uh, push notification, a push uh, communication to the receiver, and also push for receive receiving uh, data back. And we uh, use this Modbus protocol here, so please don't change any of that. Um, right, so here you can see now that we have basic and advanced settings. So in the basic settings, we have under general where we can restart the inverter. Uh, buzzer enable simply means exactly what you guys are used to that. You can, uh, you know, whenever you press the, the keypad on the machine, it makes a noise. Uh, so you can enable or disable that buzzer. Um, the normal and the standby button, this particularly puts the machine into standby mode. For instance, if you need to change your battery type or you need to do any other settings where you get an operation failed error code three, um, you must remember that you cannot change the battery while the machine is charging or discharging the battery. So typically then you would have to put the machine into standby and then you can go and change the battery settings. Um, remember that if your machine, if your, if the dongle is paired to a router which is running off the EPS output of the machine, then you have to put the machine into uh, the change of switch into the grid position so that uh, you don't lose the Wi-Fi connection. All right, that's very important. This particular block here, um, and what I like about the whole new layout is it separates the um, the functions into quadrants. 
So it's quite easy to, it's easier to read. Uh, and, and I'm sure that uh, as we get used to it, uh, you know, it'll be a lot better. This is your EPS output uh, side. And here you can obviously, um, uh, if you enable the power backup, you see here that the EPS mode will be uninterrupted. Okay. Uh, and here you can set your output voltage as well as your output frequency. This particular feature here is something new. We never used to have this on the SNA. It was only for the Alex P series. Uh, but I see it's been added now. And so before I slide the screen up any further, let's just go to advanced settings so that we can see uh, what features come up here. Here we have obviously the energy saving mode. This particular function here, the green function, catches a few people out quite often. Remember that if you enable this, if the power consumption uh, on the EPS reading or on the, on the the on the load side is less than 60 watts for more than 10 minutes, then the EPS then uh, the EPS relay or the output relay will be cut, all right? And then you have got to uh, restart it to get it going again. So please only enable this function if you've got an, an installation like a holiday home or something where you want to preserve the battery, you know the grid is stable, then um, you can bypass, I mean, you can enable this function here. All right, and then same thing with the battery eco enable. Um, if you enable this, if you hover over the mouse there, it basically says when the when the battery reaches an on grid end of discharge value and AC charge is disabled, the inverter will switch to bypass mode until the battery is being charged again. And remember that it'll only go to battery charging in the battery charge time that you've um, allocated, and that the switching time can also take up to uh, fifteen milliseconds. All right, so I'm going to go back to the basics so that we can go back to this quadrant. Here we have the hybrid setting. Uh, many of you are familiar with this as well, PV and AT to take, take the load jointly. And this is particularly if you have a um, an installation, you must be very careful. Uh, you know, we have some prepaid meters that um, are very, very sensitive to leak current. And especially if you have a machine that doesn't have an external CT then you're going to want to use your CT offset here. And what I like about this is that they've grouped everything together before we had to go and search for uh, these settings uh, you know, on, on, in various places on the page, but here it's, a bit, it's grouped together very nicely. This PV and AC take uh, load jointly, it means that the PV and the grid will share the load together during the times that you've enabled it. Um, and and essentially what happens there is because you must remember that this machine is an eco hybrid, the full hybrid can perform multiple functions with PV battery and grid at the same time, but the eco hybrid can only either do um, like load from, from the PV and the battery or from PV and the grid. If you enable this here, then it's going to allow you to take PV and grid together. Right, uh, grid CT connection, you will only enable this if you have the new six kilowatt with the external CT, you cannot enable your old five kilowatt with this, it won't work, okay? So this particular function, this connection here is particularly for the new machines with the external CT, right? Export to grid, you guys know how this works. So if you uh, are allowed to export to the municipal grid, you can enable this. And then here you just have to put your export power percentage and what this allows you to do is it allows you to export uh, excess power. So in other words, you're harvesting PV, it will first supply load, then charge the battery, and any additional power that is left over or excess power that is left over will be exported to the grid. And this percentage value here is you can say, I want to export 100% um, of my excess PV or I want to export 10%. So as an example, if you are harvesting five kilowatts and your load is one, your battery is fully charged, you have four kilowatts available. If you set this to 50%, then it will export two kilowatts. If you set it to 100%, it will export four kilowatts. In other words, it's a percentage of the available value to export. Okay. So, and, and any time that the load picks up again, then the export will drop. So it will always prioritize load and charging first before exporting any power. On the parallel setting side, once again, exactly the same. Um, yeah, you can choose a single phase parallel or a three phase parallel. Now remember that you have to refer to the manual 
that comes with the machine to see what the CAN bus node to be set at. And by when I refer to the CAN bus node, I'm talking about the dip switches under the machine. Under the machine, you will have a little blue or red block with dip switches, two dip switches on there. And that's typically your 120 ohm resistor. So um, you simply look at the diagram to see if you've got two machines, then both switches on both machines will be on for in that situation. If you've got three, then it's the first one on, middle one off, and the last one on. And so on it goes. It'll always be the first and the last in the on position, and the middle machines have to be off. And that works the same for single phase and for three phase parallel. All right, and then just remember that um, with the SNA, unlike the LXP, you do not set the master or you do not allocate the master in the parallel setting. The, the machine will automatically allocate a master and that will be the first one to switch on. So for instance, if you build a parallel station and you have two machines, um, the first machine to switch on will automatically assign itself as the master and the slave will obviously, obviously be um, a standard slave, and um, you can if you if you work on the station and you switch the machines off, you do it for some whatever reason, or you're doing firmware updates and you update one of the slaves first. As soon as the others go on and off, the first one to come back on again will then reassign itself as the master. But be careful if you want to keep one as the master, then uh, a particular machine as a the master. There's no reason that you should. But if there's, for whatever reason, you want to keep one as a master, then you always have to make sure that that machine gets switched on first um, when the resets start. Um, and the last thing I like about the SNA is that you can plug the battery communication into any one of the machines. It doesn't have to go into the master. It can work off of any one of the slaves as well. If you have a, a, a um, if you have a parallel setting with uh, multiple machines in single phase or three phase and you are sharing the battery, it, that means that you've got a battery bank. The batteries are all connected in uh, parallel. And then from there, they go up to a buzz bar or a common connection point before, and then each of the inverters connect to the common connection point of the buzz bar. Then you have to enable uh, the battery sharing, right? And then the master will, will determine how uh, the other machines charge and discharge uh, to the batteries. Um, and here, you can set the composed phase. Now, remember that the default setting is always phase R. But if you are going to go for a three-phase parallel, then, first of all, the machines will auto detect which phase they are connected to when you start up the grid, uh, which is quite a cool feature. Or if you're working in an off-grid situation, in other words, you might be doing a three-phase installation on a farm, then you can go into each machine here here you will click on the drop down and you'll select the machine and then here you will set the composed phase so you can there's r s and e um and um uh, the only time you will change this in off-grid mode is if you have uh things like motors or something that has a particular direction which it needs to turn in but then you simply have to change the phase settings around very important that when you're doing an off-grid situation or off-grid setup in three phase that you make sure you allocate the composed phases, right? Otherwise the machine will, if you have two on the R phase, then you, it simply means that one of your phases will be missing, okay? Uh, and by doing this, it simply um, changes the phase angle between the machines. So the, the phase angle on the time value will be 120 degrees over to each other from here, okay? Uh, let us see what is in that quadrant in the advanced setting. Okay, so here on in these two quadrants, I change. Remember that you've got two tabs here. So now the, these quadrants have changed. Here, the default setting for the fans are seventy percent uh, for each one, and you can change the fan speed, but I don't recommend that you go any lower than fifty-five percent uh, for either one of the settings, right? And then there's also a fan speed slope here. This one is currently set on the default, uh, but you can obviously um, sit for a new slope. Um, particularly, you must remember that the machine underneath has three fans. The left and the middle fan are dedicated to cooling the DC to DC and AC to DC side, and the right fan cools the MPPT. 
I know uh, some clients have their machines installed inside uh, for various reasons, um, and it can become a bit of an irritation. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't eliminate the fans. So always remember when you're selling an an an, uh, an SNA to advise your client that these are fan cooled. Um, when it's charging the battery or discharging the battery, the fans will come on periodically. And when it's harvesting solar, the fan will run probably for most of the time that it's harvesting the solar, especially when the, when the um, power being yielded goes very high. Right, so here we have a very cool feature that's also been added now. Um, it's the neutral and potential earth bond or the, the bonding. All right, so you can enable it, but remember that the older version of the SNAs do not come with the neutral earth relay bond, uh, I mean, uh, bonding relay installed. Only the new six kilowatt SNAs and the newer machines that will be arriving after the current stock has been depleted, those will come with the bonding relay installed. So you, there's no need to fit the jumper any longer between the, your output neutral and the potential earth. You can simply enable it here. What this allows you to do is when the machine is in the on-grid mode, it will assume that the bonding is already done at the municipal transformer and there's no bonding needed required um, on the EPS output. And only when the machine goes to off-grid mode uh, will, and you've enabled this, will it close the uh, the relay, uh, the bonding relay inside the machine, and then you should get zero volts between neutral and earth on your output. Okay, um, PD setting, here we can obviously set them um, to a number of settings. This one, in, if, if you guys ever see this one here, DC source mode, DC source mode is what we use here in the workshop when we are testing machines because we don't have, uh, we, we, we've got DC generators or, or, or power generators for the D to when we test the, uh, the MPPTs. So we can set the, uh, the MPPT voltage range as well as the current. Uh, and when we're doing that, we select the DC source mode because there's no fluctuation here. So there's, you know, the, the tracker can't track anything uh, because the, the, the DC power is stable. Um, but um, so obviously, uh, you know, for what it's worth, it's, it's a multi, multiple point uh, tracker. Um, and, and what that does is a maximum power point the tracker for the for the uh, the solar it obviously just uh, balances out the fluctuations in there. So uh, the other setting that we have here is we have two MPPT connected to the same string. What you can do here is let's just say for instance you've got a uh, you've got uh, ten panels on the roof, right? So you're going to put five in the one string and five in the other. But what you want to do is you want to um, you want to parallel the strings on the roof and only bring down one set. So by paralleling them, uh, what happens then is that the voltage stays the same, but the current increases, it doubles. So let's just say, for instance, you've got uh, panels on the roof, five and five, and your open circuit voltages, I'm going to use a round number, it's 200 volts per string. And the current rating, the short circuit current of the, rate, of the rating of the panels is uh, 10 amps. If you parallel the two strings on the roof, it'll then become 200 volts, 20 amps. And that you can then bring that down through a six millimeter cable or cable that's rated for the current rating. You bring it down and then on your PV board, uh, before it goes to the inverter, it'll come in, it'll obviously go through an SPD, uh, through a circuit breaker and some and fuses. And then you can bring out two positives from the breaker and take it to the inverter. You can put the you can put one positive into PV1, one positive into PV2. You only need to bring one negative in because the negatives are common inside the machine. Um, or you can bridge it, the positives inside the machine with a suitable bonding jumper. And then you tell the machine that they are, you've got two MPPTs connected to the same string. Then it knows that it's a much higher current coming in and the, the power is shared across the two uh, inputs. Or this one is the common one where you're bringing it on sets of strings and you run it through your protection on the PV input board and then they go in independently into the machine, okay? Right, so here is the a cool thing now where we've got the working mode settings. And the nice thing here is you can actually see on the graph what the times are set. 
So uh, here I can see that the AC first is set, you know, for in, in these times here. And where I've got the green, um, that is where it's running, where it's going to run in off grid mode as well as um, uh, um, on the particular side. We are using just 15 minutes, I think it is, um, or half an hour, we're using to charge, to run the system of battery. Um, uh, so that we can cycle the battery on this because this cycle has got no PV whatsoever. All right, so here we have the uh, battery AC transparent um, and the AC card, you know, uh, the, if you look at these settings, they, there's nothing new about them. It's just that they've been grouped in certain areas. And here you can see that we've got the charge time set for uh, mid, 30 minutes after midnight and the end time is 23.59. So this particular site runs for 31 minutes. Okay, so there's a minute there and there's 30 minutes here. It runs for 31 minutes on battery, okay? You'll see that there are three different time zones here. Please don't set all three exactly the same. There's no need for that. We often see that when we go through settings and we're assisting uh, installers or end users, we see that the installer has copied the settings across all three time zones. It's not necessary. You only think to use the additional time zones if you want to use different time. For instance, I might want to say that I want to charge the battery here between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m., then I want to charge between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., and then again from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So that's the only time that you're going to use all three time settings is if you have three different time zones that you're going to set in. Otherwise, you could, if you're doing it for 24 hours, like this machine's got no PV, then we will set it for 24 hours, yeah. All right. And re also remember that before um, our clock used to run from midnight to midnight, but now you can run from one day into the next. For instance, I can set this one here. Let's just assume the other one was empty. I can set this from 1806. Like that. It'll, if, if this was zero, then it, it would run from AC charging would run from six in the evening through to the next day to six o'clock the next day. Okay. Also something handy that we've added. Right, so the battery settings here, you can see um, these are the list of batteries that we have on our pre-populated list. We often get uh, requests for more batteries to be added, but unfortunately, we're not going to be adding any more. Um, this is going to be the limit of what we have available. And you can see that here, especially under setting number two, we have commoned quite a few batteries in this grouping because they use the pylon protocol. Um, so it's very important that if your battery doesn't appear on the list, even if the manufacturer tells you that you can use any one of these, it should work, then the onus of the, or the um, responsibility of that falls on you, the installer or the end user if they change the settings. But we will only back or warranty any of these here. It means that these batteries have been tested in our lab and the protocol has been shared between manufacturer and manufacturer. So in other words, Lux Power and Hynov shared, Pylon and Hynov shared, and Opt and so forth. Some of these batteries that are on here are not available in South Africa because uh, the, um, the SNA is sold in other countries as well, uh, where they have these other brands. You might not see all of these brands in South Africa, but uh, typically they are, uh, it's because um, the brands are used in other countries. Okay, um, the charging, um, pretty simple again, for display. But the nice thing that I like about this is that you can now grab the slider and you can move the slider up and down. In other words, if I wanted to change this very quickly, you just simply move the slider and click set. Before you had to go in and change it there, it's just a, another, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a gimmick setting, but it looks cool and it works now. You can do exactly the same with the with the battery discharge control. And sorry, and uh, to, uh, a quick reminder, you see that here we've got charge limit, right? This one was set at 110, I think it is. And here we've got 110. That's the default. And you must remember that's the total system discharge. Okay, so this is not the AC charging. This is social system charging, which means that the our AC charge here was set at 50 amps. Uh, that's AC. But here, this is D 
DCM, but the, the DCMs include PV uh, because we can go up to that value uh, when charging with PV. Um, on this side here, we have the discharge control. Um, and here you can see that this particular machine is preset to 110 amps DC because the, the, the SNA can handle that kind of discharge because of the fan cooling. And also because this machine has got a high NAR battery, we've allowed that. But if you want to pre, if you want to pre, uh, um, extend the life of your battery according to the manufacturer, then you can set your current discharge here to a lower value. Okay. Um, the battery warning uh, on this particular site is set at 20. And simply what it means is that when the battery on this particular site gets to 20% SOC, then we will get a warning 26 or 27, I think it is. It's, and fully what it means is that you've now reached that threshold and you've got another 10% left between there and there. Um, and on the slider here, once again, we can set, see how cool it works, so we can set our off-grid by moving the slider, and we can also set our on-grid discharge by moving the slider here, so it's a pretty cool feature. And this obviously will jump between there and there, depending on whether we've used SOC control or voltage control. Right, so now we come to the new cool feature, which is the smart load function and the generator charging function. Now the generator charging function is already active on the SNA. It's been there for a while already. Um, and um, the, the SNA has, if you look underneath the machine, you have dry contacts. There are two sets and you're going to be using the one for the gen port. Uh, and it's simply just a relay. There are two relays inside there. Um, and it basically what it does is you can set it will look first here, you're either going to set your 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 flags according to voltage or SOC. And then here you're going to tell it what the size of the generator is. And typically what we recommend is that you put in a generator that is minimum 1.25 times the size of the inverter. If it's a five kilowatt inverter, you're going to put up an eight kilowatt generator and so forth. The reason we do that is because when the generator is running on the gen input port, the generator must be big enough to carry the full EPS load and charge the batteries at the same time. If there is PV available, then the PV will charge the battery only. PV will never uh, take load when the generator is when the generator relay is open. And we do that for a very, very simple and important reason. It's so that the uh, generator cannot receive any leak current and we will simply damage the alternator by doing that. So we don't allow that at all. But the safety feature, when um, you're running a generator, PV will charge, when PV is available, it will charge the batteries and the generator will take the load as well as charge the batteries if required. Okay, so here you can set your generator charge current. And remember that this is in amp DC. Always take note of the amp. If, if, it's, if it's 30 amp like we have here on the AC charge, then it's current in uh, um, in uh, alternating current. But if it's DC, then we will notate it with a DC symbol like this here. Okay, so if we want to charge the batteries and take load at the same time, but you don't want to overwork your generator, then you can simply uh, make it less. You know, you can take it down to 10 amps or whatever the case may be. Um, it can then simply mean that your generator can carry more load while charging the batteries at the same time. Some generators, uh, or most generators should have a voltage regulator. But if your generator uh, battles to keep the voltage and the frequency stable while running, we advise you to add load on one of the generator plugs before it gets to the inverter. Uh, maybe add like a thousand watt or one kilowatt load there just to get the voltage regulated to stabilize. But the power it sends to the inverter is stable. Remember that the, the, the generator relay will only open when the voltage is stable as well as the frequency. If that's not, if it cannot deliver stable voltage and frequency, then the hour. A uh, relay will not open and I'm not to uh, Right, so the next tab here that we have is the smart load tab. Now, we have preset this. Um, only the machines that come with the external 
or sorry, the machines that have the seat on the generator port, uh, which are the new machines, uh, will be enabled. You'll be able to enable the smart load function. So, what does smart load mean? Smart load means that we can turn the generator port into either a port that receives power from the generator or we can turn it to a smart load port. A smart load port simply means an auxiliary output port. So please make sure that when you enable this, that there is no generator connected to that port because the machine will put power out of that port. If you enable the smart load, and what it will do is when there is PV available, if the PV will supply uh, the battery, charge the battery, um, it will put out power on the AC out as well as the smart load port. You can now connect load to your smart load port that are not as essential as the loads that you have on your essential uh, or the AC out or the EPS out. So for instance, you could put underfloor heating on there or a geezer or a pool pump or whatever the case may be. And it will only put out power, it will always put out power on that port when the grid is on. In other words, your grid bypass will be split between the EPS out and the, and the, the 10 port. But when the machine goes into off-grid mode, then it will look at these functions here. So it will want to know what the SOC of the battery is. If the, you can say, for instance, I want um, my, if I'm gonna do this, let's just say for instance, I'm going to say, let's make that 50%. It as close as I can, and I'm going to make that 90%. Basically, what I'm saying here is that if there's load shedding, and I've got loads connected, smart load port, and it's enabled, um, then um, let me not do this because it's easy to do it. Um, and that's enabled, then if the battery, the battery gets to 90%, and the battery's discharging, and there's PV then it will continue putting out power. But when the battery gets to, let's just make this a round figure, let's make it 50%. When the battery gets to 50% SOC or 49, then the power output on the smart load port, in other words, the auxiliary power will cut off uh, so that only your essential loads will take load from the battery. A pretty cool feature. But now your SNA can put out power on the output. And very soon we're going to be um, adding um, AC coupling to the uh, SNA. And AC coupling means that you can connect your, uh, if you have a, an existing uh, sunny boy or a, a grid tied inverter, in other words, an inverter that just harvests solar uh, and and um, supports or supplements the, the loads, you can now connect it to an SNA which then turns your Sunny Boy into an inverter that can now store power in batteries, all right? So the, the, we will also use the smart load port for that. Power will go into the smart load, um, and uh, we will have a new feature here, um, and the machine will also be able to do frequency shifting. So in other words, when the batteries are fully charged, then it will shift the frequency so that the, the, the on-grid inverter can uh, start erasing its output power until it will switch off completely. Right, and this feature here is probably my most uh, exciting feature to introduce to you today. Uh, many of the professional engineers have been asking for this, especially those here in Cape Town, where the SNA is an approved inverter for um, grid connection. Um, but the city is asking that the inverter only reconnects after a certain so what you can do here is when they want a one minute reconnection time. So what ha what will happen now is if you enable this, right? What will happen is when the inverter when uh, when the grid is on, everything functions normally. It'll either be in bypass mode or it'll be discharging the battery or PV and battery discharging is fine. And then when the grid goes and there's load shedding and the inverter goes to the off grid mode then it obviously supplies the PV and battery to the load. And when the grid comes on again, this will be your delay. So yeah, I can set a 60 second delay. I can even set a 300 second delay, which is five minutes. This simply means that when the grid comes on, the inverter will count down this timer. And only when the timer gets to zero, 
will it connect, will it open the grid relay? Even though load shedding had finished, this inverter now at 300 seconds, it will wait five minutes before it reconnects the grid to um, the inverter. This is a prerequisite now for the city of Cape Town, and I'm sure many of the other municipalities will follow suit. So you guys will be uh, very happy to know that this function is now um, available. This particular one here is for PV. In other words, if you are, if you have PV connected and you are exporting PV, then um, you can also uh, set the wait time uh, to connect to the grid if the solar input is ready and the and and the um, grid uh, voltage and frequency is within range. But when it says voltage and frequency is within range, it simply means that you know that uh, uh, load shedding is finished. Um, you must also remember that we don't only disconnect to off grid mode when when uh, there's load shedding. We also disconnect and go to off grid mode when the grid frequency and the grid voltage is out of range. Now on the LXP range, we can set the the the, the um, uh, we can set the grid um, connection uh, voltage on, on on the SNA. We can't do that. The LXP we can. So uh, it's predetermined on the SNA. Uh, if the voltage goes below a certain value or higher than a certain value, it goes to off grid as well as the frequency goes to uh, off grid. All right, and then you guys all know this button here, the all to uh, default thing. Um, that is uh, puts the, the whole the whole machine back to to the default setting. All right, so let's go back to. Um, I think this one. Oh, I want to make sure that we. Okay. So we've gone through all of these settings already um, on the new settings page. Um, and we will put out a public, hey, we will. We will put out a notification or publication of when the new settings page for the SNA will go live. Some of the older machines are still running on the older settings, and I think some of the new machines already have uh, the new one um, activated. But we will put out a notice when all of that is uh, active. All right, guys, so that is the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending. I'm just going to go to the chats to see if there are any messages or any questions. I don't see any. Um, if you guys have got any questions, please, uh, you can post your questions on any one of the chat groups in the forums. Uh, we have the uh, support groups on WhatsApp. We also have the DIY group on WhatsApp. Post your questions there and we will answer your questions for you. Um, we will be doing a regular training on a weekly basis now going forward. Um, and it will be great if you guys can also give us some idea of what, what training or what particular topics you'd like us to cover in the, in the upcoming training sessions. So um, thank you very much, uh, everybody. And um, I hope to see you guys soon in the next training session. Uh, like I said, um, you know, keep your, keep, the uh, questions coming, we, we we really appreciate it. We appreciate your support, um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next training and the next uh, session. All right, uh, thank you very much.